Ta-da! Bet you weren't expecting that. We're gonna do a class today. It's gonna be pretty upper body heavy. So if you wanna skip right to the class, go ahead and do so. Otherwise, I'm gonna give you a few tips that'll help keep your shoulders and your wrists potentially safer. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to come to a position where we can let our arms just sort of dangle palms facing forward. So what we're looking for here is a carrying angle. So some of you might be squeezing your arms to your body and that's not what we're asking for. We're asking for a relaxed position uh, with the shoulders pretty much over the hips and palms facing forward again. So when I look at my arms, I see that there's a fairly big angle coming from elbow to wrist from against the side of the body. I'll show you here, it might be a little bit more obvious. And one arm actually is a little bit out more than the other. So what this tells me is when I do weight bearing things like plank or uh, anything where I'm bearing weight on my hands, I'm going to turn my palms around and put my hands in about that position. So it's going to be wider than shoulder width, which is typically what you hear in um, yoga classes and the fitness classes too sometimes. So if you can honor this angle, it's going to help a lot in the shoulders quite a bit. In fact, it eliminated my shoulder pain which was primarily coming from like pec minor area, but I also had some rotator cuff stuff. I don't feel it anymore since I adopted this about nine months ago. Okay, tip number two. <clears throat> when you have this carrying angle, you can turn your fingers out just a little bit. Now there are some shoulder structures, I've seen them, where a big turnout is required for one reason or another, right? Uh, just turn them out a little bit, and if you know better, if you feel like turning them out more, it's fine, not a big deal. Okay, the other thing is when we put our hands down, this is the third thing, when we put our hands down, they're going to be slightly in front of our shoulders because it helps create more of a, a wider angle in the underarm region, which will snug the humerus in the glenohumeral joint. In other words, more stable shoulders. Okay, so when we do side planky stuff, and there'll be quite a bit of that, we're going to have a little bit of an angle. It also helps protect the wrist from going to more than about a 70 degree extension. Anything more than 70 degrees is considered above average for mobility. So yes, some of us can do it and some of us can do it healthfully, but maybe doing it all the time is not great. Plus, the more of a, the, sorry, the, the more severe the degree here, the more the shoulders are probably on top and then there's more of a chance for stability. All right, and then the last thing, number four, is we're going to try to employ the Bruce Lee technique when we have ourselves in weight bearing. So what that means is if you have your arms out, okay, you're going to pull them back and sort of hug them in, you know. So hug them in and then feel the muscles between the arms and like the ribs here. And so when you turn your palms around, we're going to have that sense of hugging in. Similar to also when you're in a side plank, that idea of hugging in, even though your hands are not going to slide across the floor. We'll make isometric contractions throughout, and I will gently and lovingly pepper reminders for you throughout. Okay, let's start. So we're going to come to cat-cow, and this is where we're going to first get to experiment with our carrying angle. I happen to have two blocks, and if you don't have blocks, it's not a big deal. You can go without... Um, you can also use paperback books, soup cans, and other various block-like things. So I'm using my carrying angle, and because I've been doing this a while, I know how far my fingers have to be turned out, and I'm going to use just a little bit of a motion here to see that I can get the elbows to bend back. So I'm going for the elbows to bend back, but there are many structures that no matter how hard you hug in and do your Bruce Lee, the elbows are gonna point out, don't worry about it. If you're doing your Bruce Lee move and you're hugging the arms in, then you're fine. You're engaging the right muscles. So it's not about what something looks like. It's often more about what it feels like. Good, so from here we'll do cat-cow. So as we inhale, we literally stick our butt up in the air. The chest kind of pulls forward. And then when you exhale, it's like there's a wave coming from in front of the, um, the low belly up through the navel ribs, and then you might round the upper spine a little or a lot. And then we just repeat. So it's like a wave, and it's going to go down the body on the inhale from the chest to the um, basin of the pelvis, and on the exhale, it's going to come from the base of the pelvis all the way up through the front of the spine, and then the heart can pull back. So as we do this, we're also going to do a few other things. We're going to prepare for that side planky stuff. 
Side plank is also called Vashistasana. And we're going to pivot the hips side to side. And as you do so, the shin that is not bearing weight can come up and do all sorts of things if you want. If you want to do some interesting, funky movements, have fun with that. The whole time, I'm maintaining my shoulders behind my wrists. And often when you honor this carrying angle and you have your fingers churned out a little bit, you're going to have the inside of your hands pressing into the floor almost equally with the outside because there is a tendency to favor the pinky edge of the hands because we force shoulder width apart, okay? All right, and then now from here we're going to do little circles, right? So we're going to go, uh, well, I'm going clockwise. You can do whatever because we're going to switch and you can go all the way back to child's pose. Let your elbows bend with you and feel free to just breathe in whatever way feels good. And then next time I come forward, I'm going to switch directions. Isn't this fun? So if your hips are doing a little popping and cracking and that feels okay, then continue. If it starts to feel annoying, little sharp pinchy pains, then take smaller circles, see if that helps. Good. All right, so we're gonna curl the toes under and we're going to press back hips towards heels. And then if your toes don't curl under comfortably like this, which is fine because it's actually pretty normal, then you can elevate your knees and that'll give your toes a little bit more room to grab the floor. Let your head hang if the neck is healthy. When you breathe, the belly should feel compression from your thighs. You can take a blanket between your thighs and your belly too if this hip flexion is just not feeling good. We're going to breathe here for about five to ten more cycles. Try to let the breath travel. We know it's not literally traveling down into your belly. We're just experiencing abdominal pressure changes. And you want that. You want the belly to billow out in all directions, almost like there's a donut around your, your mid and lower abdomen. And when you inhale, you inflate the donut. And then when you exhale, donut goes bye-bye. I'm envisioning a chocolate frosted. Okay, groovy, let's come back. So we're gonna start playing around with side plank positions on our knees. So again, this is a lot of weight bearing on the hands and if you're not used to that, you can always take breaks, come back, shake things out. And we'll do a few of those two together. Okie dokie. Let's take the right leg back. So I'm still working with the wider hands with the fingers turned out a bit and I'm letting my elbows have a little buoyancy to them. We tend to lock the elbows out when we're in weight bearing and that makes the exercises easier because we're engaging less muscles. Okay. <clears throat> so if you want it to be easier and you want to hang out in your joints, that's fine. Just know that if that's all you do, it's gonna create some issues in the future. Alrighty, so from here, we're gonna take the left fingertips and we're gonna do the itsy bitsy spider out to the front of the mat. And you can keep your hand close or far. You can stay on your finger pads. I know you can't see, I'll scoot back. Finger pads, little tarantula hands. Next time you exhale, create that cat pose, but only in your low and mid belly. Don't round the upper spine so much. And then lift to the right leg. Breathe. If it feels okay, pull the belly in again on the exhale and lift the left arm. So now you have two limbs extending in their respective directions, front and back. And from here, if you choose, on an inhale, you can stretch fingers and toes away, get long, and then exhale, make a big cat spine and pull elbow to knee and knee to elbow. Breathe when you get there and then exhale on the way out. And we're gonna repeat that. Inhale to pause, get long, exhale to get small. Inhale, pause, exhale, move. Breathing in and coming back. And then next time, if you want, you can take all of your limbs or part of them down, curl your left toe under. We're gonna have some fun. It's all fun until somebody shoots an eye out. As you exhale, pull the knee and elbow together. See if you can lift that left knee 
and stay up. It's okay if you fell over. I'm not laughing. And then you can take it down, unless you're already down, and then stretch it out. Did you just have a WTF moment? It's okay. Inhale. Maybe try one more time because you're like, I want to really try that. Now remember, if all you're really stuck in is, you know, a stage of striving for something, consider that yogically, you don't want to be stuck in a striving self-judgment phase if you can't do it. I just did it three times. It's okay if you did it zero or negative three. We're going to come down and rest. So you're welcome to take puppy pose, hips high, elbows down, hands together. Some of you will place your head on the floor or a block to bridge the gap and bend the elbows. And some thumbs will touch the nape of the neck, others will not. Just rest here. Don't be afraid to let the belly get big with the breath. Remember, nobody's watching. Well, big brother's probably watching, but I don't care about your belly. All right, and then we'll come up and we'll do side two. So this might be a good spot for the little wrist break. It's entirely up to you. Take your hands together. And then we're going to reverse the hands. So the backs of the fingers and palms are touching. And then we'll curl our fingers in as much as we can. You can try to make a fist. You're not going to be able to make a proper one unless you like have absolutely no tension in your tendons and your muscles, in which case walk, do not run to your nearest emergency room. OK. And then the other thing we're going to do is, it's one of my favorites, Press your elbows to wrists to pinky together, and then try to keep everything together. And it's almost like you're lifting a bucket of water in an um, underhand position. If you do have wrist problems or you're trying to avoid carpal tunnel for any reason, you can do this without anything in your hands, like maybe, I don't know, 50 reps a day, or take tiny little weights or dowel. Okie dokie, side two. So, we do left leg now, yes. Left leg, still with the hands pretty wide, hands in front of shoulders and just little bouncy bouncy. Just breathe normally, don't overthink it. You may feel what is a stretching sensation in the backs of the legs, ankles. Now it is time. Right finger pads, itsy bitsy spider. You may keep your hands down the whole time. Next time you inhale, press your right knee left hand, and then exhale, little cat belly, lifting the back leg. And then maybe on the next exhale, you lift the right arm. Breathing here, get your bearing, try to press your right top foot into the floor so the knee doesn't have all the weight. Next time you exhale, well actually let's inhale and stretch. Stretch those limbs and then exhale, get small, make a cat spine, take your knee and elbow together. Breathe and pause. Exhale, stretch, inhale, and then exhale, pull in. Breathe to pause and we'll just keep doing this about three or four more times making sure that this isn't really about the limbs so much as initiating from the center of your body. So before your limbs even come together, you've got the little cat spine working. Good. Now, you may or may not get a little crazy here. Curl your right toe under. You can always put your right hand back down. And then as you exhale and knee and elbow come together, maybe you lift the right knee, breathe, and then perhaps you come back. You could do this with two hands on the floor just in different positions. Or you could just go back to what we were doing before and be a little bit more civilized. Do all the big movements on the exhale. Uno mas. Da, 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 da. Woohoo! And then back. 
good and then we're gonna lay on the bellies for a moment or three you can come to sphinx pose hands together or apart and just chillax here let the hips wiggle let your head move a little bit because if you did try those big balance moves at the end you probably over clenched your teeth or neck jaw or something in an effort to work harder so just move it around uh -huh, uh -huh. move your jaw around uh -huh, and down stick your tongue out hey. good can't resist a little bit of core work when we're down on our forearms so if you want to resist it you can but um, resistance is futile I will assimilate you so curl the toes under and again if you're experiencing any any weird pain anything going on in the belly or the low back just stop and pause or watch a couple before you go okay. so you're gonna lift the lowest part of the abdomen and then lift the spot behind the navel you might want to even round the upper spine for extra work if you're not used to this and then lift the knees and the more incrementally you take it the harder it generally gets you can breathe here you can come down on the exhale so you could drop the knees drop the front of the thighs the front of the hips and that might be where you end especially if your back's a little tender otherwise you can let the top of the hips and the belly touch the floor we'll do this a few more times if you want a little extra challenge for a lot of people flat feet are harder just make sure you're pressing into the big toe knuckle more than the pinky toe unless again your back hurts and then just let your feet do whatever they want to do to protect your spine all right we're going to do these inhale and then as you exhale press the feet down the low belly works first you can call it the pelvic floor if you want you can draw the belly in and then you can lift from here try to keep the head level with the spine and then as you exhale the slowest descent possible you can breathe whenever you need to don't feel like you have to hold your exhale out especially if you're not practiced at that you're going to keep going you're going to keep it in increments i gotta move up a little bit increments if you could actually access the 24 mobile vertebra of your spine Ta -da. okay two more times rest if you want rest if you want my feet keep coming off the mat you can do your Jackie Chan you can smile you can curse at me I won't take it personally and then una mas my hands are sweating it's weird the sound effects are possible if you want you can use the low belly you make sure the lower ribs are tucked in I'm going to take my knees down and push back to child's pose to take a little rest. Chillax now for a bit. Because we got harder shit coming. You can relax as long as you want to. You get to press pause. Pause, as they say in Long Island. So <clears throat> we're going to prep the wrists a little bit here um, by actually working the forearms for a bit so um, if you can get small if you can get small you can take your forearms down and you can use your knee slash front of your shin to palpate the forearms you'll notice that your fingers curl in and then stretch out like little marionette puppets they're so cute those fingers um, if that doesn't work, if you can't get small, just use your other forearm. You're essentially doing Thai massage on yourself. And if you're local, I can do that to you. And if you're rich, you can fly me out to do it for you. And then from here, this is actually another good carpal tunnel protector. And then we'll do side two. So I can get small. So I'm going to do this. But... If you can't get small, use your other forearm. 
And remember, it's about body weight. It's not about pressing down with your muscles. So you just, that's why there's a lot of back and forth movement here, because I'm just using my body weight. I'm just pr pressing in and coming off. There's a dog chewing on a bone. Don't mind her. She's keeping her teeth clean. Okay, groovy. Side plank work, here it comes. So you might have to work some stuff with your hands on the block and I, I might show you a few of that and then you can use your discretion. Coming back to all fours, swivel your left shin off the mat to the left, stretch your right leg back, turn your toes whatever direction feels right, and then slowly reach your right elbow to the sky. So your right elbow is going to the sky and you're gonna make sure that your chest opens up to its largest capacity. The left arm should have some buoyancy to it. You should be able to bend and straighten with control. And then as you start to reach the right arm back, if the shoulder feels crunchy or pinchy, take that wing back, make your wing again. Good, so this is a version of side plank. As you exhale, you're gonna draw your belly in and take the right knee and maybe the right elbow together, breathe. And then exhale, take the foot back or let it hover. Inhale, and then exhale, take it in, doo -doo -doo -doo. and your foot can always come down and you can just maintain the position. And then next time you come in, hold it for a second, see if you can take your right foot to the front of the mat in line with your left hand. Your shin's going to have to move for sure. Now you're in a lunge, and you can take a nice little twisty twist maybe more like a spiral. Make sure your left hand is far enough out from your shoulder that you feel supported, comfortable. And you can take your right hand to the small of your back, or maybe it creeps over to the left hip. Work your right foot in a way that feels good. You might have to turn it out more. Try being. We're going to lift the back knee up You'll come to a brief version of pyramid with your foot turned out and you're going to bend and straighten the front leg to the best degree you can. When I say straighten, I don't mean it has to lock. It doesn't have to go all the way straight. Take your back knee down, swivel the shin off again. Take the right knee into the chest, hover the foot, and then maybe you bring the leg behind you. Make sure the belly has a little collection in the front so it's not all in the low spine and then reaching your right arm overhead, perhaps, in the same direction that your left fingers are pointing. Good, and then from here, we'll come down. That might have been a lot on your left arm or wrist, so take a break if you need to. Take the left arm and thread the needle. Take it to the other side. Rest there for as long as you need to. We're gonna do side two. Right shin swivels off the mat. My hand's in front of the shoulder. I feel comfortable. I feel like I can bend it and move it. Left leg stretches back. Take your left elbow to the sky. And then from here, again, just test. Make sure you've got that. Not only can the arm bend, but you can jack, Jackie Chan or Bruce Lee it a little bit in. So you can like isometrically contract your hand sliding towards your knee. And then the left arm may or may not stretch out. Stretching it out doesn't make it better. Okay, so don't force it if it's pinching. Okay, so from here, you can really use a nice inhale to set up grounding the right hand, and then exhale, bring the knee in, and maybe give yourself a little hug. Maybe kiss the knee. Breathe and then exhale out, hover the back foot or take it down. If this is not for you, take the foot down or hold the hover, and don't worry about coming in, otherwise, you can join me for two or three more rounds. And then when you're done, if you can, create a huge roundness in the front of the body like an ice cream scoop. Take your left foot to the front of the mat in line with your right hand. Let your shin do its thing. Turn your knees and toes out a little bit to the left and then slowly spiral open, making sure that you still have that control in your right arm. And if you like, you can take the hand to the small of the back or to the right hip.
groovy. Taking the hand down, you can lift the back knee or not. I forgot to tell you, you didn't have to do that the last time. And then you're gonna just take the front leg towards straight. So wherever that means for you, just don't copy me, especially if it's just not what your body can do naturally. We'll do a couple more. And then when you're ready, take your back knee down, swivel the shin, take the left leg back, a hover, maybe a little bit of a um, pause here. A little belly collection in the front. And then we'll come up to a kneel and pause and do a little wrist rolling. Not to be confused with Rick rolling. Take some weight on your hands. Fing my, my fingers are facing in. And then you, this is a little shoulder traction trick too. So you can take a cat pose, make a turtle shell in your upper spine. And then you could pull and just try to take your chest forward and stick your butt out a little bit. Now if your arms aren't long like mine, this may feel like ridiculously not even possible. Cool. Okay. This is where it gets kind of um, circus tricky if if you're too hung on getting into all these different positions that I'm doing please just kind of use it as it's a template for fun it's not something that you have to make happen in your body uh, ever for today so we'll take we'll swivel the left shin off the mat right leg back right wing up now you could do quite a bit of these movements with both hands down so let that be something that you know you can come back to, okay? Otherwise, so from here, we did lifting the, in this case, the right leg or the back leg. This time we're gonna lift the support leg. So I'm gonna ask you to scoop your low belly just a tad, lift your left knee, maybe take it to touch your right knee, and then take the right knee, or sorry, the left knee, bottom knee up and towards the chest. So if you have to take your foot down, please do so. And then from here, you can extend your left leg so it's perpendicular to the other leg. And you can lift the leg towards the sky, that's the inner whole inner leg lifts towards the sky. And you could be doing this with two hands down, right? And then from there you can pull the knee into the chest, come up to your right tippy toes and swivel your toes forward <laughs> into that position you may or may not have tried earlier. It's uh, it's the down dog with two limbs <laughs> and then from here you can turn back to the side plank take the leg down and freaking have a rest come down to a wide-legged forward bend if your knees pop up it's fine don't force them down and then we'll just come forward to the side and then we'll do some active movements here it's going to feel like your inner thighs are stretching that feels comfortable keep it going Groovy. Take your hands back. They want to be wide enough that you can bend. And then press your feet into the floor. Let your belly pull in and then lift the hips. And then if you want to, turn your left fingertips towards the front of your mat. Make sure again that there's a bend, that you're not stuck in your shoulder joint. You're gonna really draw your belly in. In fact, you might have to ice cream scoop yourself. Take your right hand up to the sky, slide the left foot back in, pull the knee back into the chest, revisit your little side planky McPlank, and then come to a three leg dog. So both hands down, left knee can come to the sky, stretch it out. If you wanna to come to your tippy toes on your right foot, you can. And just do whatever feels good. And then we'll take it down meeting in the Zidam dog. And then from here, we'll just sort of bend into the knees. You can come to child's pose and rest. Not everyone's crazy like me and can just stay on their freaking hands forever. Um, come to puppy pose or child. If you don't feel like resting like me, but your wrists are kind of having a time, you can come to dolphin. Do not lock your knees out, please, in the dolphin. The hips won't like it. And then make sure the low ribs have some connection 
to each other so they're not just flaring out into space. If you want some extra arm work, because who doesn't, press your pinky fingers into the floor. Do your little Bruce Lee arms, so isometrically contract, hug your upper arms in, your biceps in, and then maybe you can lift your elbows off the floor. Maybe not. Don't hurt yourself. And then you can take them down, and you can either say, screw that, I'm not doing it again, or you can do it a couple more times. I do it on the exhale, make sure I got a good belly position. Coming up, and coming down one more time. And then maybe you can come to the down dog. This time you're really gonna wanna rest. So either come to a squat, to a shirt fixing position, and chill. You might be kneeling or in child's pose. So feel free to avail yourself of any guilt if you're thinking that you don't want to do side two. It's not necessary. <coughs> you might need a longer break. Or it just might be something that you try later or you never come back to this video. It's all good. So we'll meet on the fours. Right shin swivel, left leg back. Making sure the hands are in front of the shoulders. Going to open up to the left again, taking my left elbow to the sky. So feel free to hark back to positions of old and lift the left leg and maybe that's like a really good spot for you. It might be very helpful for an injury or for a weakness. If you can, try to find that little scoop in the belly, taking the right knee up, maybe it even touches the inner left knee. The foot doesn't have to come off the floor, but maybe it's off the floor. And then if the right knee can come into the chest, you want to make sure that you're not leaning into the back body. You want to make sure that you have a little low belly action here. And then if you can extend the right leg forward, you may even pulse the inner right leg towards the sky. You can always do this with both hands down, remember? Fantastic. So then from here, if you want, you can just sort of take the knee in and kind of mess around a little bit. Otherwise, <laughs> if the knee's in the chest, you might do this with two hands. Otherwise, lift up your left heel, come up to your tippy toes, pivot your left toes forward. <laughs> come to your three-leg dog or your two-leg dog, contralateral dog. You want to be all technical. That's what I would call it anyway. Whoa. Ah! And then when you're ready, you can turn back to your left, extend the right leg and take a load off. And do your little stretchies. Stretchy McStretcherson's. You can just hang back and chillax without using your wrists, maybe even turn them the other way. <sighs> okay. Ready? You can lift here. Take the hands back and wide enough that you feel supported. Press the heels down. Knees will probably pop up a little. Belly draws in, you can lift up for a version of Purzvatanasana. <coughs> and then if you feel healthy in the right arm, you can turn your fingertips towards the front of the mat. Again, you wanna have a capacity to bend. And you'll take your left arm up to the sky, slide your right leg in, and revisit a side plank-esque position, whatever that means for you. And then from here, we'll take both hands down, yay. Take the right knee to the sky. Maybe you stretch it out and open and you have a little fun. Whee! And then when you're ready, we'll take it down. Take the knees down. And have a little breaky break.
So if you want to sit with blocks in between your heels and your bum, that can help ease pressure off um, the knees being so bent. Also, if your feet don't do this, you could take a blanket or blocks underneath. The blocks are going to hurt most people, but you could take a blanket. Okay. So now, now we're going to go into the coup de gras. So before we do the coup de gras, let's come up to chair pose. This is going to require me to either lose my head or move the camera. What do you think I should do? I totally moved the camera. So from chair, Utkatasana, you're gonna take your hands either to your heart or wherever the frick you wanna take them. Don't really care. At this point, uh, take your seat back. You don't want your knees way the heck in front here. And you're gonna have a little lean, and yeah, you're gonna have a little wiggle in your hips. A little support in the low spine is good. We're gonna take your arms forward and inhale, sit low. And then on exhale, you're gonna to twist to the right. Inhale forward, and yes, let your hips twist with you too. It's a natural motion for the body. Let your hips twist. Let the leg you're turning away from bend a little more, and the leg you're turning towards get a little straighter. And then we can do it the more traditional way, which is to keep both knees relatively bent. So if you twist to the right, you'll stay more in a chair. So now you gotta do more twisting in your spine, and. Make sure this is okay for you. So we gotta do a lot more movement in one place because the hips are not moving with us. Good. Nice. Now we're gonna get a little bit lower and a little bit lower. Feel free to sit on something. <laughs> Aren't you having fun yet? And then I'm going to be just before squat because I don't want to be hanging out my joints. I want muscles to be working. Fantastic. Okay. Feel free to take your knees on a higher surface. I'm going to show you this from a... Uh, is this the best angle? This is probably the best angle. I'm going to face away from you just for a moment. So that's the knee thing. If you want to do the shoulder thing, I'll show you that after. But this is what we're going for. We're going for a little bit of a side crow here. So if you side crow, you can use both upper arms as a shelf. This is where Bruce Lee is going to come in pretty handy. Okay? So <clears throat> uh, if you take your hands to the width that they're supposed to be based on your weight bearing, you're going to hug your arms in, lift up. Now sometimes you can't get your belly out of the way. I mean, I was once 50 pounds heavier and I could not get my belly out of the way, so, or I had, to, I had to do a lot of manipulation, maneuvering, and that's fine too. So from here, you can come forward onto both arms, use them as a shelf, and you can just lean forward and have at it and just be, not even lift your feet. The feet should lift as a matter of course. You really don't want to be jumping into it. And then I'm going to show you from this angle how the blocks can be incorporated. So again, hands are wide, and then I'm going to use both arms for this one, and let the shoulders touch the blocks, and they could be a little source of balance, and you can go like this. this. Looks like fun, right? It is, maybe. It is for me. So if you're able to do that, you're going to take the knees, have a full twist. If that doesn't work, this is your third option. You can't quite twist all the way around. You can't put your hands down. It's okay. It's pretty normal. It's not, there's nothing really wrong with you. But you can take your hands higher. And then when your hands are higher, you don't have to twist as much. Right? And then it's a lot of flexion in the spine and um, <clears throat> a lot of rotation too, uh, as well as needing a lot of hip and knee flexion. So it's okay if you can't do that, but you can use the blocks. And then. If you have a little whoopee, you can put in front like a bolster or a pillow or something if you're afraid of falling forward. So let me show you where I was going with this. And then you can decide to fast forward to the ending part of this where you can keep going. So I'm not going to use my other arm. You, you're welcome to. 
So as I come forward, I'm doing my little Bruce Lee action, and I'm going to take the top leg back, and then straighten the other leg. Now this is very similar to what we're doing in the side planky stuff. And then if you want, <laughs> you can take <laughs> the left leg on top, then be all straight and stuff, and blah blah blah. Come down. Fancy? Or fall like a sack of bricks. Okay, side two. So if you're using something under your shoulders, you can stay up a lot more indefinitely than you can if you're not. So if you're doing side two, now sometimes one side is easier than the other. Like this is my left twist side, and I learned these on my left side first because my right side was impossible for a while. So taking your hands as wide as you need to, coming up into the side crow, got my Bruce Lee going, taking the legs out, stretched. I'm feeling a little weaker here. I did do a workout before this. Maybe not the best of ideas. And then you can come out. Okay, that's it. Now if you want to pause, go back and play more of the arm balances you can. Otherwise, we're going to chillax. We're chillaxing now. If you have blocks, we're going to use them to counter a lot of this weight bearing that we've been doing. The weight bearing is a very core activated and it also has a tendency to put us into some habitual patterns if we're not used to working the core. So <clears throat> the bottom block is on its lowest setting and it's going around your bra strap area. So guys, just imagine, or some of you might not have to, and that's fine. And then from <clears throat> here, we're going to take the block at least one level higher. It might even go two levels higher. <clears throat> My block is going perpendicular because of the pigtails, but yours don't have to. So from whatever position you're in, now you could just throw a pillow behind your back and be fine with it, or a bolster that goes parallel with the length of the spine. And then from here, I'm going to keep my legs bent, knock my knees in, and have my toes out. And then this is just a place to relax. So if your breath is a little ragged, this is a good place to bring it back to a nice regular state. And remember, regular doesn't mean that your inhales and exhales are the same every single time. In fact, that wouldn't even really be healthy. Just means that it's going back to a rate where you don't feel like you have to control it anymore, where you don't feel like you're kind of gasping or nervous about the next breath coming. It doesn't feel like you've just done something strenuous. If you want to take your arms back behind you, you can. Now, if you have a bolster or pillow, you can wrap your hands around there. Otherwise, perhaps you're able to loosely clasp your fingers or grab one of your wrists. And when you breathe, try to feel the feedback of the back of your ribs pressing into your bottom block. So if you're breathing, your ribs will Move a little bit out in all directions, and we tend to focus on the front body, but <clears throat> your lungs primarily reside in the back ribs. So see if you can feel the movement of the ribs and the shoulder blades, and also the movement of the shoulders. As you breathe, they are going to do whatever the ribs, the movement of the ribs and the spine dictate. So if your shoulders do not move as you breathe, you may want to explore relaxing and freeing that area up a little bit more. I'm going to take my other block down a level. I feel like I'm, I can do that. My neck is healthy enough for that. So please figure out what's best for you.
we're going to do here is we're going to start to move to the side. If you want to stay longer, go ahead and do that. Move to your right side. Remove the blocks. Let your legs be relatively uh, lax for right now. And then see if you can grab your left foot. If you can't naturally grab your left foot, you might have to do a little uh, maneuvering to do so, and that's fine. You can pull the heel towards the buttock with your knee in front of your hip first. So what we're going to do is um, create a lengthening sensation in the front of the thigh. We're going to do this with a little belly work. So if you can hug your legs together and then just pull the belly in ever so slightly. And then as the knee goes back, don't release the belly. We're going to keep the belly engaged because when the belly releases, it is no longer about flexibility in the front of the hip or the, the softening muscles in the front of the thigh. It starts to become your low back just compressing, which in and of itself isn't bad. But if it's your default, we're going to try to work out of our default today. So with the belly in a little bit and then taking the leg back, you can absolutely do this without holding on, but you want to make sure that the belly is protecting the spine. And I'm getting a stretch. In fact, the more my belly goes in, the more the thigh muscles are responding. And then I'll stretch it out. Let the legs go out straight and then suddenly we're in Anatasana. We're infinite. Infinite. Okie dokie. Side two. Same thing, let the knees be in front of the hip. Bend, grab if you can. If not, you know, there are things you can do. Straps and towels and belts and stuff. And then a little pulling in of the belly, just a little, you don't have to go hardcore here. And then allowing the knee to go back, making sure that you feel a healthy sensation in the front of the leg. So anything way up here in the hip joint that pinches or anything, uh, avoid that. You could squeeze the legs in towards one another as you do this, even though they're separating a little bit more. The belly continues to just lift up. It holds up towards the ribs. It doesn't squeeze in so you can't breathe. Good. And then we'll stretch the legs. Doo, 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 doo. Most excellent. Okay, we're gonna end with a spinal twist because spinal twists are awesome. You're gonna cross your right leg over the left. Use a block or blocks or pillows to let your legs fall to the left and be supported. So your right leg is on top because your right leg likes to be in charge. And then you're gonna let the legs fall over. And then for me, I don't need support right now, not today, just not, don't feel the need for it. So I'm gonna let the floor catch my legs. Arms are optional. And just allow the right side of your of your belly to uh, expand and push out. Feel the movement of the right ribs. You can turn your gaze to the right if you like. Feel like changing it up you can take it to center maybe ah, the knees come up like stretch and then there'll be left leg over right and then legs over to the right so your left leg is now the dominant leg your right leg is submissive and something is going to catch your legs or ankle on the right side so whether it's a hard object or a soft object or it's the floor itself and then your gaze could turn to the left here, possibly. Make sure you feel a full exhale out. The fuller the exhale, the easier the inhale can come in and do its job.
So at this point, there might be something you really feel the need to do. It could be stay longer where you are, go to the other side, do some other position that you really like. Otherwise, I'm going to offer your Shavasana now a pillow or blanket under the knees. This can be really, really nice. All I've got are these blocks. And that's all I need. And then your arms can do whatever. So mine are kind of like I'm at the beach hanging out, but arms out to the sides a bit, palms up might be your choice. And we're just going to be here for a bit, and um, you can come up at your leisure. So thanks for playing with me. I hope to see you soon.